my name is Jim Wu and um, in terms of work I'm a lawyer I practice employment law which for those of you who are wondering what that is it's basically anything legal that arises from someone getting hired to someone getting fired and everything in between um, I've been symptomatic with Parkinson's since I was 22 I was diagnosed with young onset Parkinson's when I was 30 and since then I've been called to the bar I've had last year I've conducted two uh, fairly large-scale Supreme Court trials as basically the only counsel on there so um, managing the symptoms quite well and looking forward to living an awesome life Yeah, so I guess like the first four, <clears throat> so if, if I could break it down uh, by chron chronology, I'd say probably the first five years it was me not really knowing what I had. Mm -hmm. um, I had the symptoms, like like I said, since I was 22 initially, it was sort of just me being unable to walk properly. Like I figured I was having more difficulty just making strides, making just normal movement initially. I thought it was probably because I don't exercise enough and maybe if I do some yoga that it will help but eventually came to the part where I realized okay I'm able to like do splits but I still am having difficulty walking and doing sort of basic things so that's like when I was about maybe 25 or 6 I realized okay it's probably time for me to go see a doctor and see what's really going mm -hmm. on uh, so went to see a doctor um, didn't really know what was going on Went through my first year of law school with the symptoms kind of in full, um, like they were pretty full symptoms as in like a lot of rigidity, a lot of um, definitely tremors and like, like mind you, this was law school where you had to present, where you had to um, memorize a lot of information and basically work very hard. So, but managed to get through all this, all those symptoms rather painfully, but uh, made it to the top 10 top 10 of my wow. class made it to the dean's list and transferred over to from New Brunswick over to um, British Columbia and around that time I got introduced to Leva, Leva Carb, mm -hmm. which almost instantaneously I felt wow I've noticed something I haven't been I haven't gotten that feeling for almost uh, six years which was relief yeah like I all of a sudden realized I can I can walk fairly well not properly then but like a lot better than before yeah so from the levo carb treatment they started um trying to filter out like what i didn't have versus what i did have mm -hmm. and eventually uh, it came down to two possibilities uh, one was dopamatic uh, dystonia and the other was parkinson uh, parkinson's disease so what ultimately was the decision was that um, I went through genetic testing and then they confirmed that it was uh, Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. And during that time I was 30, I was doing my articles, which basically is the apprenticeship component for someone to become a lawyer. I had already finished law school. Um, needless to say, like it was shocking at the time when I learned about it because I obviously had no idea what Parkinson yeah. is apart from just seeing Michael J. Fox um, but um, the people who told me that it, it did look like there was some hope and that like the medication would seem to be doing fairly well yeah yeah so uh, ever since then like there have been some advancements and what I tell myself is this is a disease I can manage, but it's also a disease I need to responsibly manage. Yeah. So in other words, uh, make sure you have your schedule pat down yeah. in terms of like your medication, because otherwise it can be very, very painful. Um, and the way I tell myself is, look, um, a lot of people are going to disagree with the analogy, but this is like the same as you wearing a pair of glasses. Like glasses are easy to put on, but you... Like for me, I'm where I wear my glasses or contacts everywhere I step yeah. out of home because yeah. if I don't, I get out of the car, I could put myself into mm -hmm. very serious danger. And mm -hmm. the same is same goes for Parkinson's. Like your medication is pretty much your glasses. Yeah. So make sure you always take them, take care of yourself, and 
I expect to live a full life. No, not really, because I think the way I look at it, no one's perfect. Mm -hmm. I think everyone has sort of, like, no one has a perfect body. Mm -hmm. Everyone has some sort of um, ab abnorm abnormalities in their bodies. Mm -hmm. For me, it just happens to be Parkinson's. And in a way, I'm, like, knowing that, like, it's genetics and it's predestined that I'm at least grateful that I have it now. As opposed to like me having it maybe when I'm 70, because mm -hmm. I heard, according to the research, that the earlier you have it, the more you're able to manage. And there's also advances in science. And I think, I don't know, I think the way I see it is, because I'm young, I'm able to have the strength to mm -hmm. manage. Whereas I don't know if uh, at age 70 or 60, I might be, it'll be a lot more painful for me to sure, have the physical sure. abilities to manage. But no, I think in terms of like, like life, there's only so much you can control in mm -hmm. life. It's not, and life is defined by sort of what obstacles you face and how you overcome them. Yeah. yeah. I, I kind of want to say that Parkinson's made me even more resilient and um, harder working than mm -hmm. I would be if I didn't have the disease. And I say that because I, I mean, like, I I worked really hard in first year law school because I thought that, I, I didn't know I had Parkinson's. I mm -hmm. thought that the reason I was so nervous and the reason I can't even, like, I always shake and sort of, like, wasn't because I had some sort of chronic illness. Mm -hmm. It was because I just didn't, I didn't know the law well enough. So the easy solution would just be, okay, work harder, <laughs> like, internalize everything, like, right. memorize all the cases so that, you don't have to like go through the sort of like like you if you shake pages because like what's well, actually would really because I was lacking uh, leave a dopamine that was making me shake the pages but yeah. for me I thought well, okay well one thing we could do is like if it's internalized in, in the brain you don't even need to look at the materials <laughs> and wow yeah but I, I think like if I didn't have Parkinson's I probably would have I would definitely not have forced myself to work as hard yeah i think a lot of things would sort of um i think a lot of things sort of like the way i see it is everything works out in the end yeah. so those few years were definitely tough but i think right now um being able to like run that many trials without really me getting so nervous mm -hmm. is kind of just um a combination of me working so hard and i like again Park, having Parkinson, it sucks, mm -hmm. but I think without the disease, I don't really see myself professionally being as successful wow. as I currently am. That's that's great. Yeah. Great, you made a negative into a positive. Right. Yeah, I like to think very much the same way. Like I do human rights mm -hmm. um, matters as well. Some of those concern people with. Um, physical or mental illnesses. Mm -hmm. I remember I had one particular um, mediation. It was, um, the facts were very <laughs> not um, in my client's favor. Mm -hmm. He was a very senior um, manager at a very important, at a very big store. Mm -hmm. So he was a store manager. Um, he was caught um, basically doing um, fairly illegal drugs while on the job <laughs> okay. so definitely not um, and like their biggest issue was that we're, well we fired you because one we're devastated to know, to know you're doing it and two we're even more devastated to know that you didn't even tell us about this thing mm -hmm. and at the mediation um, like that was one big contentious issue which is why did you not tell us that and that's when I basically intervened and got my leave card pills and basically said, so I take these pills, they're basically a way for me to manage my Parkinsonism. Mm -hmm. And I haven't told my client that I have Parkinson's or mm -hmm. let alone I take these pills. Mm -hmm. But as a side effect, they cause me to be drowsy. Mm -hmm. And there's a good chance that I might fall asleep in this <laughs> mediation, which I'm pretty sure my client would not like. Mm -hmm. And if I do that, he, I mean, he might fire me and yeah. tell him, 
and then ask basically the same question that you guys asked, which is, why did you not tell me such an important thing? And I'm pretty sure I would give him exactly the same answer mm -hmm. as he did, which was, I did not know it would go that bad, and I thought I would actually be able to control all the side effects mm -hmm. coming yeah. out of that medication. And then it was like a moment where everyone was like, oh, so that's <laughs> why. And that's when sort of um, Cyril became some sort of monetary figure and we managed yeah. to settle the case. Yeah. Wow. yeah. But uh, yeah, it's always a good thing to bring up right. because rather than hide, hide the fact that you have... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's it's something I've been I've been increasingly doing. Like people, when people say, that, "Are you okay with your um, movement?" I just tell them, "Well, I, I've got Parkinson's, so sometimes mm -hmm. that's that's a side effect of me. Um, <laughs> that's a side effect of me being not on top of myself in terms of medications." Mm -hmm. And one time um, when I was running a trial, it was my turn to cross-examine the witness. Mm -hmm. And usually for a lot of lawyers doing cross-examination, it's probably the most stressful time. It's <laughs> yeah. so a lot of it spontaneous, like you don't really have any script to follow. Uh, so as luck will have it, that's when I realized, okay, my medication is, I've not been on top of my medication. I'm having a bit of a flare up, but you know what? It's my turn to cross-examine. <laughs> Let's see where this goes. <laughs> um, fortunately, the cross-examination went very, very, very well, but... I was, of course, un under a lot of pain, and then afterwards it was the break time, and I found that I couldn't really even get up. So at that mm -hmm. moment, I just stood up and told, asked the judge, um, Justice, I need some accommodations. I've got, I have Parkinson's, and one of the um, symptoms is that I have difficulty moving, and I understand that when the court breaks, everyone is to vacate the uh, courtroom. And I was wondering if I could just probably remain here for probably five minutes so that my medication mm -hmm. can um, take its effect and everyone was very understanding um, my yeah. clients like they did not react negatively at all like if anything I think they are they're even, they're even more impressed that like under these circumstances I'm still able to perform well and like basically shows that even more I'm even more loyal to their case mm -hmm. yeah. um, one of the one of the um, party members, she actually started um, breaking down in tears because she thought that it was the trial that caused the Parkinson's. <laughs> so I told her, no, 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 no. This, this has been like go going on since like I was 22. So I can yeah. tell you like with a 100% certainty, it's not your, it's not your case that caused me to have Parkinson's. Um, but no, it just promoted understanding, and I think, like in the many ways, like it's, it's, it's not. The way I see it, it's just like glasses as well. Like you mm -hmm. don't, there's no shame in telling people, oh, sorry, I need to put on like my glasses because otherwise I, yeah. I don't see. And I think probably the more, the more we promote understanding mm -hmm. of Parkinsonism, Parkinson's, I think that's when people will be less, because I think part of the problem is a lot of people don't, don't even know what it is. Yeah. They hear Parkinson's disease, they think, oh, okay, um, that sounds serious. I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. but really, it's. I mean, it is serious. It's chronic, but it, there, it's. It's. I think what what would help for the people who have it are just immediate um, understandings of like how to accommodate them. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I, I think if um, like what would be helpful if I say someone has Parkinson's, I would, they would just say, okay, well, do you need like do you need to sit. Uh, I could probably arrange for you to just, um, like, you need some time for for your levo carb to kick yeah. in, yeah. Um, and I think just promote just sort of what the judge did in that situation, be an understanding, mm -hmm. um, like, be a willing to accommodate. I think that'll go a very long way. Okay. Yeah. Like when I told my parents that I had the disease and. Like the process of them finding out was through genetic testing. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of shame on their part. But then I was just telling them, well, I mean, this, this isn't anything you can, can control. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm, and at the time, like, I mean, it is what it is, right? Yeah. We, we're, our genes make up who I am and part of, part of it, there's Parkinson's. So 
I don't really think there's any shame to. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it is what it is. I don't. I'm not going to blame you. Yeah. Um, and I don't think you should feel any shame at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think that's something that's really important to get across to yeah. the older generations. Yeah, and I think the other part is like with the with Asian families, I like they want they want to. I think it's important for whoever has it to communicate it to the rest of the family mm-hmm. because just like all families, like they want to do what they can to help. Yeah. And don't don't like I, I don't keep it just to yourself because I think it will it would really hurt them because they yeah. really do want to find out more about the disease and more about like what they can mm-hmm. do to help. Mm-hmm. So I think in terms of my other like extended family members, they, I mean, obviously it's not something my parents like tell the whole family. Yeah. And, my son has Parkinson's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's, uh, yeah. but I think it, like the same, it's sort of just like repeating mm-hmm. the same thing over to them, which is like, I have Parkinson's and usually the reaction is, <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah. And then what I usually say to them, well, like, Doctors have confirmed that I have, so I'm pretty sure I do have it, mm-hmm. and I, I, f- I face the symptoms. But there's no need to be alarmed. It's not like a death sentence or anything like mm-hmm. that. Um, and like as long as I have my medication, it should be fine. Yeah. Yeah. So I think medication is very important. Um, I also think like being active. Mm-hmm. Um, really helps and the reason I say that is unfortunate because of COVID-19 like I've gotten a lot out of shape Mm -hmm. and I realized like that's having a detrimental toll Mm -hmm. so I'm hoping so I am starting to well make sort of the um, take the take a few steps in getting myself back into shape so like what I do for for sports is I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I take my dog for hurting although the, like I think the hurting stuff is more of an activity activity and an exercise for him I just yeah. kind of walk around with yeah. a stick <laughs> getting sheep um, but um, but I think just like staying active is also a very important yeah. part because I and it's definitely a challenge because I mean my job as a lawyer like it does involve long hours mm-hmm. and it does lo- involve me sitting a lot of the yeah. time so I think it's I don't. I don't practice what I preach, but I, I'm hopeful that one day I will. Which is that I need to make exercising like a part of my job. Because yeah. if I want to continue in this profession for a long time, I need to be able to. Well, I need to live. So yeah. I, in order for me to live well, I need to take care of myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like for me, like I'm also a proponent of exercising. Yeah. And to do, to do, to do whatever you love, right? So exactly. So the fact that you enjoy Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I think that's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, it, it's it's always been hockey. Oh yeah. 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 I, yeah. Just love hockey. I saw I saw your picture on the on oh. the website. Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was five years ago that we did that campaign oh, for nice. Parkinson's Awareness. Yeah, um, yeah. This month, so I thought, wow, five years. That was five years ago, so uh, fifth anniversary, I, I'm right. doing my own project for... Right, so right. So I think it's kind of full circle for me. Right, you know, and I, like, I'm very thankful, <coughs> like, like, for you, for, like, you taking this initiative, because I think it's, it's really meaningful what you do, like, I think promoting awareness and knowledge. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is, this is like, what we need to do. But also, like society needs to know more about yeah. this. I would say definitely join the Parkinson Society of British Columbia. Like that would that, of course, unfortunately, was not communicated to me. Um, I think if I, like, I, I think at the time, if I, if I were to give sort of a new sort of feedback to sort of how my diagnosis was given I would say just um, like obviously tell me what it is mm-hmm. but also connect me with connect me with the society because the society it does an amazing job promoting 
um, knowledge of Parkinson's, um, allowing its people who have it to become more res uh, more resilient and be able to manage the mm -hmm. disease. Um, it also allows your family. It also provides resources for their family and members to be engaged. Yeah. I wasn't given any of this, and for me, it was just like, okay, so I have this disease. What do I do now? What do I do next with it? And I think if they had connected me with the society, I would have known. Like the society will probably have connected me with either a group or maybe someone, someone who's uh, who has the disease, and they will be able to tell me like. Don't need to worry at all. Mm -hmm. I've been having it for some time, and you're going to live just a fulfilling life mm -hmm. as I yeah. currently am. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for me, it was quite similar. Like, when I found out, I had just my doctor's uh, diagnosis and I think a little pamphlet that um, was... Uh, sorry, this pamphlet was, like, um, just promoting volunteering at, at the hospital so mm. I thought okay well that's not really what I want to do right now right but uh, yeah so for me to get connected to this to the society it was through Spurwalk and and through Spurwalk I participated every year since 2005 right. what, what, what's uh, what's Spurwalk? Spurwalk oh Superwalk yeah. right 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 okay yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Not very. Not being very clear. Superwalk is the annual fundraiser for. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 I've, um, no, I have. I've definitely heard of that. Um, when I was in, it was weird. Like I knew about the Parkinson Society of British Columbia um, because I, through my undergrad, I was in the UBC Arts program, mm -hmm. and I know they they always look at look for co-op students, mm -hmm. and that's when I learned. Oh, okay, so there's this. There's the Parkinson Society, British Columbia. Oh wow! Yeah, so but I never made the connection. No, I never made the connection. I certainly did not immediately make the connection when I was actually diagnosed with it. Mm -hmm. um, I actually knew about the Parkinson Society of British Columbia um, through my friend uh, Elizabeth Sadowski. Oh yeah. Yeah, so she, I saw her as like, she was um, a part. Of, <coughs> she was part of the board, and then like. I confided to her I have the disease mm -hmm. I'd like to get more involved and mm -hmm. see um, see because I like to get back to yeah. the community yeah yeah so that's cool like, yeah like yeah Liz she's great she is yeah, yeah. yeah I guess just like in terms of words of encouragement um, mm -hmm. like It's not fun to have the disease. Like there are mm -hmm. moments where you just feel like, oh cr yeah. crap, this is another reason why I should be on top of my medication because I'm, I'm I'm in this moment where I feel debilitated again. But just like what I always tell myself is, okay, relax, calm down. You've been through this like a number mm -hmm. of times. I mean, but just like take care of yourself. You're able to mm -hmm. manage this th disease, and just remember. Uh, like above all else, it's not the disease that defines your character. Mm -hmm. Your character is defined by how you're able to um, react to the disease. Are you able, like if you're someone who's going to be pessimistic and have a pessimistic outlook, then mm -hmm. that's basically your character. That's one way to basically approach it, or make the most out of it yeah. and tr live your try to live your life to the fullest and just. Pr Obviously, don't pretend that you don't have it because you do, and yeah. like it's. Um, but be realistic to yourself, but also um, don't let it don't let it limit your life. Like it's, it's just, it's just another thing that life throws at you. Yeah, and rather than, and you just you just tangle with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah.